this okay is there sound now is there sound to your the customers are you can you hear us Amy Are you, can you hear us? Okay, thank you, we're good. Oh, okay, wonderful. So I'll start over. Hi, Lisa Muller here, and I'm here in my studio about to give an oil painting demonstration. We're so glad we're able to do this in the time that we would normally be at uh, Rittenhouse Square Fine Art Show in Philadelphia, in Rittenhouse Square. And it's just so nice that we're able to do this. And I appreciate the board so much for allowing these events and for organizing these events. So thank you. And Jean Petrosky is here helping out with filming. Hi, Jean. Hi, everyone. Hey, if you have comments, um, just put them in the chat and we'll deal with them as they come up. Yes. No, no, well, you can put jokes in, but they're going to be hard to read, but feel free. But any questions or comments, put them in. Yeah, thank you. Yes, I'll try to answer them as, as best I can. So, we may as well get started. And I thought I would start with sort of um, a, a kind of a blank of canvas, well, it's actually a board, and I generally work on boards because I don't like the bounce of a canvas and I work on all kinds of boards. I'll work on masonite or this is a piece of Luan. Um, you can see that. And it's essentially just a gessoed piece of, that's how I prepare it with gesso, the traditional um, way for many painters. And, and then I start to glue on collage pieces. And what the collage pieces do is they give it like a little bit of dimension. So as the, uh, oil, as the paint builds up and I'm sort of pushing the paint around, it drags against the edges of the collage. Um, and that helps, it just helps to add to the richness of the surface. The collage images themselves are generally images from my sketchbooks that I copy and I put the copies on the board. Uh, sometimes I have, like this pattern here is just a, a pattern that I found in wrapping paper or something like that, which I'll also copy. So once I, once I copy those, which I, actually I do it at Staples, which works great, and fortunately Staples is open now, so I'm able to go in and, and get, you know, whatever I need in that regard. But once I put those on, what I do is I clear gesso over that so it creates a little bit of tooth uh, because sometimes the, uh, the copies, the ink can be kind of slick, you know, which is not necessarily something you want. You want the paint to grab uh, your, your board. So that's where this clear gesso comes in. Very handy. All right, Amy has a question. Do okay. you start out with an idea before the collage process? No, I really don't. I, I try to keep my head free of ideas because I'm, part of my process is to move toward an idea from the painting itself. And if I start out with an idea, it tends to become a painting of instead of a painting. And that sounds probably kind of esoteric, but um, it, it, will, it will make sense, I think, as the process goes on. Uh, I just, I want the idea to come last. Um, otherwise, there just won't be the freedom and richness that, that I like to build as the underpainting. So my, under, my underpaintings are much, uh, more full than the last couple layers, which is where the idea comes in. Um, and without that rich underpainting, I feel I essentially don't get um, the richness of the end product. So I hope that makes sense. So what I generally start with is, let me get some light on this over here, 
is I squeeze out some paint and it really could be any paint. In fact, I have a lot of paints and I inherit paints and people give me their old paints. And so I don't, I have a few colors that I've chosen, but a lot of my colors are just, you know, colors that, you know, people didn't want. And those are the best colors to use in the underpainting. So what I have here is an orange and magenta and some white. The white is an alkyd. And so it, that means that it dries more quickly than a traditional oil paint. And I put white in almost all my paints and it helps them to dry a little more quickly without having to add a dryer. And then what this substance here is, this is a cold wax medium. And that is that comes essentially in a can and it's, a, it's like a paste wax, like bowling alley wax or something. Um, and that is formulated to mix in with the oil paint. So I've squeezed out colors with um, a really clear intention of not knowing what color is going to result. And from this sort of um, collection of, well, right now it's only three colors, but I can always add to this um, or subtract depending on what I, what I want it as I, you know, as I get more specific. So I work from very broad to specific. And that's partially just an attempt on my part to keep me from, you know, starting out with the eyelashes, which would be my natural tendency if I was doing a portrait. So it's, this is a way to just circumvent my own um, tendencies and you know, I have a built-in mistrust of my tendencies, I guess. <laughs> so now I've mixed that color. I'm going to go ahead and mix this color, which, surprise, who knows what it will be. This purple is a slightly different formulated paint, formulated with um, walnut oil rather than linseed oil. But again, because I have this collection of paints, I don't let that stop me from using it, they all tend to blend together. Okay, so there we go. So now we start out with two fairly specific colors. I'm going to um, use my rollers, which if you've seen my um, last demo, which may be somewhere on this feed, I'm not really completely sure, on the Rittenhouse Square Fine Art Show Facebook page feed. Um, and if not, I think it's on the YouTube channel for Rittenhouse. Um, the, which would be, well, go to Rittenhouse Square Fine Art Show Virtual Edition and on YouTube, and you'll see all the videos that people are creating this weekend and prior to this weekend. So um, I use rollers to start out. So these are um, soft rubber rollers, and essentially I just start, um, I start by rolling on some paint. And at first, it looks fairly hard edged. So, which isn't something that I, you know, that I intend. It's just the way that it goes on with the roller. So, that's why I need a separate tool in order to combine it together. So, with this, again, I'm not, I don't have an intention. I'm just trying to go over and cover the board with paint. I'm from that, I guess you could call it a school of painting, where it first cover the board, just cover everything. And then that's when, for me, my imagination starts rolling, is when we get enough paint on there. Something about a white canvas or a white board is a lot like writers say a white page is which is a very intimidating thing. So, getting this on here, like this. And now what I would likely do is take one of these uh, sort of kind of squeegee tools. They're, I don't think they're called that. This is called a catalyst tool. And there are different 
uh, softnesses, but they're essentially uh, just a rubber straight edge tool and it's used to drag the paint around in a soft way. So if you used a harder edge scraper like this, for instance, this is actually a clay rib used for ceramics, but I have plenty of ceramics tools as a, um, I'm also a ceramicist, so um, I use these a lot too. But if you dragged this across, it would sort of do this and scrape it, which has its uses. But for now, in this early stage, it's better to have the softer tool. And, and those, those tools, are they specifically painting tools or masonry tools or something? Oh, else? these are, these are art, these are considered art tools. Okay. So, so I'm just going to do that. I've, so now I've pretty much covered the page, page, the page is sort of a page. So what you can see here, which is really part of um, the great thing about using the cold wax medium paste that I showed on the, uh, on the palette, is that it's translucent. So you see I'm still seeing um, just echoes of these uh, paper collage pieces that were placed on early on. And and you'll be able to see them throughout the process in different ways as I reveal the different layers as I make them. So this is, I'm going to roll on another layer and then I'm going to show you a way that that can work together, the two layers can work together to start to make something interesting happen. Um, that, that process of pulling the paint across the surface with the catalyst tool is really essential to this process of revealing layers and not just having it become mud. It's the slim, slim layer that allows the different layers to sort of remain separate. If this were a thick layer and I put another layer on top, we would basically just have um, you know, we'd start to get a muddy mess after a little while. With this process, we can layer on several layers and then start to work back through that to reveal the under layers that have been covered over. So, so the bottom doesn't have to dry. Correct. The bottom does not have to dry. At some point, you will want it to because this process of layering and, and working into the layers and pulling um, top layers off to reveal under layers. You'll start, if, if you're going to use this technique to begin your paintings, you're, you'll find you want to start controlling it. And the way to control it is to control the drying. So the, if I let the red completely dry, I will have a different effect when I go to eat through the blue with the solvent then I'll have if I don't allow the red to dry. And, and those are just, you know, that's what happens when you, you know, work in a certain way. You just learn what it does and what the materials do. And then, of course, the materials at one point or another will surprise you and do something you never expected. And that is usually, as they say in ceramics, Christmas or Halloween. So I'm going to pull this across, so you can see I'm getting some drag there from um, something that's on the squeegee. Let me see if I can get that off, or it's on the board, I'm not really sure which, but those scratch marks that you see, and of course I'm not that concerned because they don't have to be perfect, but yeah, I'm getting some stuff from the board. Each time it seems like it's a little different, so that's fine. Okay. So now you see, it, essentially, it, it reads purple because you're seeing through the. Let's see. No. Um, you're seeing through it, through the, the blue, into the red, and they're so your eyes making a blend, which is kind of nice. So I'm gonna do a little bit more on this. 
And then I'm going to move to another painting that is, in, um, that is started in a slightly different way. And then I'm going to show you what happens with that painting. And so this is, when I talk about building oil surfaces, rich oil surfaces, this is really what I'm talking about. It's, it, it is really almost quite literally a building process because it's one thing on top of another, like brick by brick, you're building up. Now, I could do as many as five color layers on this, you know, maybe even six. I don't think I've gone beyond five, so I'm not sure what would happen beyond that. But as long as, as you have them slim, really slim layers, and, and, you've, and you've added the... Um, the paste of the wax paste. That's really what keeps helps to keep them separate. So, and translucent. As I said before, the paste adds the translucency. So um, that's what really helps with that and allows you to do that. Since the blue has been put on, we lose the imagery of the collage that was underneath. I think that's because I haven't dragged it okay. enough. And, and also, Okay, I'll, I'll do something now to help you see how that would work in, in real practice. Because, of course, with any demo, you know, you're working quickly, you're trying to, um, you know, it's a form of cliff notes. You know, it's a shortened version of what you'd really do. So, um, I drag this across like this, getting some scraping. And Kelly paint. asks... Is it acrylic or oil? This is oil paint. This is all oil right now. But I'm going to show you how I would work with acrylic on a, on a different board that I brought. Okay. So we see the edges so of the collage. You see the edges of the collage. Now, now, as I said, up until this point, I could have gone, I could have gone forward and done another, like, three or four layers. And I would recommend using opposing colors. So, but again, depending on what you do, you'll have a different result. So try some different things if you're thinking about doing this. I'm not really spelling anything, but it sort of looks like I am. Okay. That's one way to put on a layer. But I also have, excuse me, this, I just keep this, um, this is a citrusol, it's a solvent. Uh, it's not unlike the Gamsol, that's what this is, it's an odorless solvent. Um, but this is another way, just to... Can you move that light back? Oh, or yeah, yeah. Too glary, okay. How's that better? Is that better? Yes. Okay, so then, after I put the solvent on, and I How drag it through. Cool. And then see what I have on the catalyst, the tool? I might take that and just use it down here because it's, it's already a blend of the two different colors. And you see what a different color that offers. So depending on when I want to do this, dragging and solvent eating part of the process, um, this is where the drying comes in, the different ways that you might, or I mean the different times you might wait for the, the drying of the under layers. So if I had waited for the red to completely dry, then the solvent would not have been able to eat through it as easily. And you would, have, you would not have seen the white, the clear white of this particular collage piece. Um, so just to, you know, be clear about, you can make a whole art of just how the layers dry in between doing this. That could be really interesting. Um, so I'm going to um, just move this around here. I, I really hate wasting paint. I have a thing about it. So almost any time I have any extra anything, even if I've been working on a palette all day and it's completely covered with like 10 different colors, I'll just find a board in my space and I'll just put it on there. I mean, because it, again, it, 
it offers something that I can't plan, which is often more interesting than anything I could plan. So for, with this, you notice how this, because it has the solvent and it has the paste, look how it drags over these different collage pieces. It almost frames them with a slight kind of halo of color as it drags past them. I just find that really pretty cool. So, so that, that's starting to look interesting to me and hopefully to you. And I want to show you this other board that this is a slightly different way of beginning the process. Hold Same. on, hold okay. on. Okay. I noticed when you started this, these people, these this black strip of people were at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Do you frequently move the, the your canvas around, your board around? Oh yes, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, throughout the whole process until the idea starts to gel. Okay. And sometimes I'll make a whole painting okay. that you know, could stand as a, you know, a legitimate painting and probably would to most people, but there'll be something about it that I'm just not comfortable with. Um, it'll be completely dry. I'll turn it upside down or sideways and start to see something completely different. And, and then I have that whole painting as an underpainting for another painting. Um, and that actually is one of the most um, fun experiences that I have with, I'm always so surprised with how, um, how a painting can, what a painting can inspire simply by being turned around. And I could show you an example of that if we have time after this. So this, this is a painting where, um, actually it was the last show, I think it was the June um, Rittenhouse uh, Square Fine Art Show virtual edition of this year, 2020. I guess that's the first year. The only year we've been doing them so far. But in that one, I started this board. And this, so this had collage pieces on it as well. And you can actually see them pretty clearly here. Here's sort of like a dog's leg thing here. And this is a drawing under there. There's a chicken. There has to be a chicken, apparently. Um, and then there's this piece, this, these are all collage pieces. And I began this one as, uh, acrylic and acrylic is a fantastic underlayment for oil. Uh, as they say in, uh, I guess in historically in painting, I, I think it's um, oh, fat over lean, but not lean over fat. So you don't want to put acrylic over oil, but vice versa is, is great. And again, if you've, got, um, if you've got your acrylic painting and you want to give it a little bit more tooth before you start on it with oil, then just go ahead and uh, clear gesso it. All right, and hold that, that, hold that. It got oh, blurry. Sorry. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Um, so that's a, that's a good way to begin an oil. So already it starts with several layers and the collage that I'm after. And now I can add to that with oil. Why would I do that, you ask? I don't know. I just, I, I don't know. I, I love both ways of painting. They're very different. The differences are, you know, both subtle and profound. And I think that it's just a matter of, um, you know, sometimes it's just a matter of mood, what you're going to start with. So, and this, oh, but one thing I do want to mention, once you do begin with oil on an acrylic surface, that's it. I, as I said earlier, that what, what the fat over lean means is that you can't go back to acrylic and expect it to be, to have the longevity that, that you want in, in a painting. At least that's, that's what I believe. So um, one of the things about acrylic, if you're just gonna stick with acrylics, which you can do the same types of processes minus the solvents, your process, you can eat through the layers and that would be a different demo. But um, once you begin with acrylic, there's really no, 
no time that you can't continue to add collage elements because adding a collage element is an acrylic process. But with oil, at least I haven't found a, a good way to have collage be incorporated into oil. So once I stop start the oil process on the acrylic, that's it for the collage, where it's kind of nice to have that open-endedness of being able to add more elements um, with acrylic. So that's one reason you might want to, All want right. to. Oh. We've been okay. asked, can, can we see a finished piece or two? Sure. Do you want me to show them yeah. this one behind us? Here's one that, um, here's a finished piece. And this one is an example of, can you, what's the best yeah. light on this? That's fine. Okay. So here's a finished piece that's a pretty good example of the process where I was thinking, I made an entire painting and I, for some reason, didn't like it and turned it upside down and it became this painting. So you can still see parts of that older painting. This was a, a, a the body of a bird and it's, it's sort of the back feathers or the hind feathers of the bird came up here. This is one leg coming down here. And then there was another over here. Um, then the head came up through here and it was on this sort of rich background. And this was actually all the sort of solid ground that it was standing on. And I don't know, it hung around for a while and I just couldn't, I just couldn't warm up to it. So I turned it upside down and started seeing this person and just developed it from there. So that's a one example of a finished piece. And here is a large, how big is this piece? This on the wall? Is. Oh, this is um, six feet by four feet. And it's really still in process. It's, there's, there's nothing about this piece that I'm counting on um, being able to, you know, see. I might not see any of it, but there's a lot of parts of it that I like, so, you know, I, I'll probably keep some of it, but I don't, I don't want to tie myself to that. And, oh, she has left the studio. That gives me time to find out what time it is. I'm sorry. Hold on. I'm just going to try and not be so shaky here. I have a couple more pieces here to show people that okay. I it's wonder how we do it on 1228. Okay, great. Um, yeah, Kelly, the layers and layers and layers is what makes up her style. And it is impressive. It's just, there's so many surprises in there and it would give you so much time to really look at the paintings when you have purchased them and meditate with them and see all kinds of surprises in them. Thank you. Okay, here's more. Okay, so here's, this piece is actually up on the site. This piece is for sale on the Rittenhouse in the Rittenhouse Virtual Gallery, which is now open and was open through Sunday at five. This is called Annie's Garden and you can see if, well, hopefully you can see the evidence of the background that I began with. And it's, you can see pieces of it sort of through all these areas that are um, revealed behind the white. And then of course, I, I tend to mask out areas with white or a lighter color after the background gets to a certain stage. And that's when the idea starts to form then I always work back into those areas. So that's one example. Here's another. Move it over oh, there. Over here? Shadow. Okay. Okay. And how's, is oh, that cool? That's, no, that's perfect. Okay. This is called By the Pond. This is also up on the site for sale. And in this one you can see a lot. Well, hopefully in the video you can see a lot of the edges from the underlying collage, which, and even parts of the collage, I mean, parts of the, you know, the actual imagery on the collage pieces, which are under oil. So this is the, really the precisely same, 
process that I'm using here in the demonstration. So that cat is drawn on top, huh? Yeah, so the cat is pencil. And these are all mixed media, so I, I don't hold back on what I used. It's just the order in which I use it. So you can, you can go through oil with pencil, and as long as you fix it, you're good. Can you talk about the artists that inspire you? Oh my gosh, there are so many. Um, let's see. Oh, there's almost too many to mention. I'd have to get my list. Um, Stan a lot of them I can't pronounce their names. Ruzadon Kalashvili, I think, is one that I've been looking at lately a lot. Um, Amy, if you check out her Facebook page or Instagram page, Lisa Muller Studio, she'll make up uh, a list of artists. Yeah, Amy, I'd be happy to send you or anybody who's interested in the artists that I that I look at. I mean, it's like 25 people long at this point, and I keep adding to it. I keep it by my um, computer. So this piece is... Um, this became, this was a fully developed idea in acrylic before I started in with oil, just to get that richness that I, that I love in the oil, in oil paint. I mean, acrylics, I love acrylics too, as I said, they have their own special something, but this one I just felt like I needed to go in with oil. This is called Cardinal's Rule. I just finished this, so it's still wet. Oh. See a little bit oh, better. So it's still wet. It, do you put a clear coat on the final? Yes. Yeah, when it's when it's dry. And the imagery. Look at all those subtle colors in there. God, that's so beautiful. Thank you. People ask me a lot about my imagery, and that's largely. I'm just interested in. I guess you'd call it figurative abstraction, because I'm interested in the ab in how figures actually move within an abstract composition. And then the narratives, I just like to leave them really open-ended because I feel that whatever narrative a person comes up with really has so much more to do with them than it does with me. And even with me, it's never so specific that I could say, oh, this is the story of this one. You know, it's really just, I want to make images that are evocative enough to inspire people at different times in their life or when they're going through different circumstances so that it continues to, um, like the painting sort of befriends you, you know, and then takes you through different times of your life. And, you know, by sort of offering different meanings. Can you say so, again what medium you use to adhere the... Oh, I'm sorry, Kelly, your your question moved up. I can't see it. Can you... Okay. And do you ever use water-based oil paints? Uh, the, the white alkyd is the closest that I get because I, I think that that is... has something in it that can go either way, but I've never used the full-on water base. No, I haven't. And I'm not at all against them. If, if I could get results with them, I'd be happy to use them. So I just happen to have so many oil paints that because of my, uh, my belief in not wasting paint, I don't want to change until I um, basically use these all. <laughs> Do you use metallic paints? I haven't, but I've used metal. Oh, in in um, I'm sorry, in acrylic I have. Not in oil. I I really don't even know. I'm sure there are acrylic. I mean oil metallic paints, but no, I have not used those. Okay, I got Kelly's question. Okay, back up. can you say again what medium you use to adhere the collage pieces? Yeah, that's an it's an acrylic medium. I'll get it. These are great questions. Keep them coming. Yeah, thank you so much. It helps to present to you guys what you would like to hear about. Uh, so, I use these two, 
And Liquitex is, is the brand that I tend to kind of default to. Hold it still. Okay. Okay. This is one. Okay. And this is the other. So it's just a gloss or a matte clear medium. And they act as a glue. So when you put it, you need to have it under and over the collage piece. But once you do that, oh, and I also use when I'm putting them down, that's another time to use the catalyst tool because that smooths out all your bubbles and things like that. So you, you know, once you adhere it and you've got really a, a, a whole full layer of this clear medium underneath your piece of paper, and this squeegees that out and creates the adherence. Um, so yeah, these two are, they're both, you know, full on acrylic and I love them. Rachel they're... Romano says hi. Hi Rachel, thanks for showing up. That's great. Um, so that sort of really wraps up what I wanted to show you today. I. If I could just draw your attention for a second to this painting here, where I'm rolling this on top of the uh, gold and yellow acrylic underpainting, notice how vibrant the purple looks, I think, when it goes over the yellow because of the complementary color combination there. And let's drag some of that over. Then, so when, when I'm starting out with acrylic color that's already dried completely, and there's, you know, a layer of collage as well underneath. Then, now the other one, you noticed that when I put the solvent on, it went all the way down to the white because both of the layers were completely um, wet. Now with this, will be a different effect because the acrylic is fully dried, which is essentially a layer of a rubbery plastic that's on your, it's gonna be on your board. So we're not gonna be able to eat through that with solvent, it's a little more impenetrable. Oh, cool. So you can see it come away in that way. And what's nice about using these kinds of strong strokes is that it also creates um, a, ten a little bit of a tension in the, in the opposing, um, I guess, the method, and then the result of the method is, is in opposition. So here, it's smudgy, it's all sort of like messy and smeared, right? Smeared together. Then when you do a brush stroke, with the solvent through the upper layer, see how hard edged it is. You see these hard edges. And that against the smeary, mushy background is like really pops. Anytime you can work with opposing methods or opposing forces, I think in a painting, it's always helpful. So, so if there aren't any if there aren't any more questions, then I'm just going to say thank you again to the Rittenhouse board and everyone who's been working hard to pull this whole weekend together and invite you to go to the gallery online at RittenhouseSquareArt.com where you can purchase directly from the site and there are many, many artists to look through and enjoy there. Uh, but also, and you know, tune in to the, oh, I'm sorry. What is your Oh, website? my website is lisamullerart.com. And you can also, I hope, tune in to many more events this weekend. There are people opening their virtual booths for you to visit. There are more Facebook Live spots. And there's interviews on IGTV or Instagram TV. And the whole list is, is on the Rittenhouse Square Art dot com website on the home page so very easy to access so thank you thanks a lot for for coming and if you want if if you know of anybody else who has any other questions you can always 
just keep writing them in, you know, I'll keep looking at this feed for a couple days to see if there are more questions and try to answer them. So thanks. So Marjolyn says hi. This character Paul Michael says hi. Kelly said thank you. Amy said excellent. You're a fan. You're a, you're a rock star. <laughs> All right. Thank you.